um, ravages. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to have now Drone versus Failsauce, which is actually Winner's Semis. I'm going to skip, I guess, Google Frog and Akinem will be playing in a different room. And this is going to start out on Trojan Hills. Hooray! My favorite map. Or one of my favorite maps. This makes me happy. As my hooray should hopefully make that obvious. So we have, let's see, Failthos and Drone. This is going to be tough for Failthos. Sheesh. Yeah, Drone is definitely um, favorite to win. a contender. I think for winning win. the tournament, yeah, I think uh, he, between him and Google Frog, I think um, uh, Google Frog can sometimes give him a run for his money. It depends sort of on how Google Frog's playing on the day, but uh, yeah, Drone's very strong. It does I don't know how much Google Frog or Drone have been practicing though, because that's they're kind of neck and neck. But if Drone has been practicing and Google Frog hasn't, or if they've been practicing about equally, mm -hmm. Drone's gonna win. Definitely, unless Google Frog yeah, pulls definitely. out some really crazy shenanigans. But I'm not sure that'll even work at this stage of play, at this level of play. Anyway, we Drone are... Drone has excellent, consistent play, yeah. Yeah. And Google Frog have never really known to be much of a gimmick player. I mean, they have enough knowledge they could. It's just, that's not something I've known... Oh, he pulls before. out the craziest stuff sometimes. But, um, yeah, he has all very consistent mechanics as well. Yeah, they're... I mean, they can. It's just that I don't find... When they're when it really comes down to it, I don't find that they... They're like Cubay, where they'll just throw... Who we haven't seen in a while. Well, they'll just throw out something really crazy because they need something. They know they can't win normally. Mm. Yeah, he'll, he'll def he's definitely very inventive. I think some of the craziest um, builds and strategies we've seen Google Frog do them first. But he doesn't pull, tend to cheese. He doesn't tend to pull that out. He tends no. to, when he's playing in a tournament or something, he plays consistent, he plays standard. He's cre a creative player, but um, I think he prefers sort of consistency a lot of the time. Although yeah, some of the matches I think you've cast of... Um, me and him have shown us to do some pretty wacky shenanigans oh, against yeah. each other. On, we're both developers, so we like to, yeah, we, we we like to pull out, you know, crazy stuff, fell and rushes, and all sorts of things like that. Anyway, onto the game itself. So Trojan Hills, for mm -hmm. those of you not familiar, is a very choke point focused map because these these hills here, or not hills, but giant ravines. People tend to they because the size people go for cloaky and not so much spiders. It's not really worth it to go spiders or jump in this map. So the choke points really matter, and. As a result, what you end up getting is either people start where Drone is, and it's a more forward, aggressive start, but it's harder to get economic build from, or they start in the back, which makes it easier to get to the northwest or southeast, which we'll probably see Felthos do, but it makes it a little bit harder to be that aggressive. So Felthos going for more economic, Drone going for more aggressive play. Although at this point, Felthos actually just about to win the early rating. Not quite. I mean, they it's they'll need to have a few more glaives, but at the very least, they'll get through couple of drones, but one of drones glaives has actually gone around the back. There is a defender, so that's going to be fine. However, Felthos has taken out the second one of drones glaives. So Felthos does have some free reign to scout out. Maybe deal some damage. If they get around the back to the main base, drones actually totally undefended. But Felthos, they're looking for expansions. They're being very cautious. Possibly too much at this stage in the game. Just making absolutely sure that drone isn't doing something unusual. And drone, not sure what they're planning on doing. Their radar is in place. They know what's going on. But they haven't set up defenses in the main base yet. And nothing is being built yet. They are, however, setting up a glaive over the center expansion. The south center expansion. Which, that should stop things. If Failthos gets around there between the defender and the second glaive, they should be fine. Drone, that is, should be fine. And Failthos just morphing their commander to level 1. Beam laser and analyze, So plus 17 build power. Or minus 17. Oh, 17 build power. Not bad. Good for expansion. And yeah, they've taken the northwest. They're taking the center as well. So Felthos is very much being economical. And Drone not really being aggressive. I mean, they sort of are in the sense they're going to the center. But not other than that. And once another nice kill from Felthos. We're just about. Oh, never mind. Drone able to take out one of the glaives for free. That's, that's going to stop the attack completely. Felthos can't move forward. Nice yeah, micro from Zone. Yeah, retreat micro, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, Failboss's units got in the line, and the weaker one was in front. 
Yeah, we see a lot of constructors from drone, though, one going to the hill, one going around the back. Well, he pushes forward with his commander, and it's very good to push forward with your commander to the center of the map. That's, you know, the traditional thing you should do with your commander. But it mm -hmm. looks like he's going for, I don't know whether he's, he's going around the side here, I don't know whether he's going for the other hill. If he takes both hills, that sets him up in a very strong position to attack oh, yeah. down from those positions. And now drone ahead militarily. Felthos, they need to switch to warriors. They need to switch to warriors now. They have no choice. Uh, their glaive micro yeah. is not holding up. Even when, when you have your commander there and you're still losing metal extractors, when your commander's right on top of it, then you know you're sort of in trouble. So that's that's going to be something to be careful about. Like Felthos will need some static defense. We'll need some warriors. They just I'm not sure if they're going to realize they need warriors at this point, or they're going to continue to try to go for glaives. But I don't see Ticks where they is another option. Work. Ticks, Ticks are, are another very, option, yes. A, a momentum swing unit where if you take out a big enemy army, you can really get the economic, the military advantage back and give you allow you to expand unmolested. But, but um, warriors can do the same if he runs into them. But yeah, they're slower. They are slower, they, but this map is small. <laughs> it's yeah, not small enough yeah. that they could pull it out. And also, given the amount of defenses that drone is building, that sort of light assault is pr almost mandatory. The mm. glaives are going to die way too quickly, and given that Drone is just out microing Felthos in pretty much every engagement, there's no easy way to deal with that otherwise. Yeah, we see the glaives pulling back now. They were in a position, actually, where they could have dived on the base, and there was almost nothing there to defend, a single defender. But, of course, Drone doesn't have this knowledge, so he just pulled it on the side, and now yeah. he's, he's pulled his glaives back. I mean, Felthos... Which is conservative, but wise. Oh, yeah. I mean, at this point, there's two defenders and a Lotus... At least three glaives will die if they were to attack. And yeah, there wasn't a left. lotus earlier, so he, this is True. what Felthus. This was a panic response from Felthus because you could you can tell by the positioning of the lotus that it was a panic response. Uh, he, he's yeah. pushing out a little bit more, but he needs to take territory. He needs to get his constructors out because um, drone is just gobbling up territory right now. Yeah, that's like I said, three down. Felthus. Losing yet another metal extractor, though, and drone so far ahead at this point, there is enough reclaim to give Felthos just a couple seconds of an edge. But nowhere near enough to actually keep a consistent parity, which is, as you can see, military is ahead for drone, economies ahead, positions ahead for drone, everything is ahead for drone right now. Felthos <laughs> does have a nice glaive force to come around the back, but I still think that going for warriors would at least take out the glaive army. I mean, Felthos. At this point, drone. Sorry, drone is going for gunships. Probably going for rapiers. Mm. But at least with warriors, they can get rid of the glaives and cut that military advantage. Force drone to build different types of units, and at least get out of trying to win raider micro. Yeah, Felthus is going into sites now. I think he's going to try and make something tricky happen. Maybe get in and really take out some economy because he, he doesn't feel very confident with his glaive versus glaive micro. But this big pack of glaives is coming around the side, doing tons of damage. And this is something that Drone can even afford to lose these glaives just to, mm -hmm. you know, do some do, just to do the damage here. Um, and Felthus is giving away. Felthus is on. Yeah, gave away the sides way too early. Mm -hmm. Like those sides needed to get into the main base, scout out the gunship plant, kill it before any rapiers came up. At the very least, it would allow for a bit more flexibility to work with. And it looks like yeah, yeah. Drone really suspecting a backdoor assault ticks everywhere around the back. Just to make sure that everything gets spotted out in the sides, trying to move in. It's Glaives? a good move against sides, the ticks. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Maybe he saw them coming. So he, he, he really knows what he's doing here. This is very, um, very smart. Well, at any rate, the sides are once again giving their own position away. Not yeah, you yeah. Need, you need sides more attention to sides. You need to sort of come up, ambush like a single LT, then kill all the mechs within range. That then move on if you're going to take out expansion, or just go straight for the base and just you know go down the line of wind towers and just hit one up to the next up to the next up the next, taking them out. But um, yeah, if he could do that because. It, drone is playing risky by relying on nothing but wind, and it's something you want to do on this map because it has high elevation, so it's a wise thing to do. But you know, if you can get in there, you can actually take that all out. But yeah, drone's playing greedy, he's taking up lots of, lots of territory, he's using mostly wind, whereas Felfus is relying mostly on solar ships, panels, which is more conservative, he's taking less territory, just playing slower in general. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes a tick on this big army of glaives. Ooh, wow. No, nice. Good split. Nice. Good split. Only took mm -hmm. out two, I think. Yeah, only took out two. Excellent reactions from Felthos, but yeah, it might not help in the no, long run. No, it's not going to help. I mean, like I said, Felthos, they're they're still behind from some army. They're expecting Drone to go for riots themselves, having gone for 
the Rockos, but that's not really the best option. And that, not quite understanding what Drone's playing and doing. Drone doesn't have any reason to switch off of Glaives. They're doing fine with Glaives. And now Feltos is in an even worse position. And I think his, his plan, his plan here to, to finish it out is definitely to go with uh, his rapiers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that this is not the way you do the unit counter system. And now at this point, Feltos is losing all their glaives to Drone. Drone, really nice retreat there. Only lo uh, still have half a dozen left, and the Rockos are no threat to these glaives, especially with the rapier support. This is. This is basically game. Mm. Yeah, this is this is it. Yeah, the rapiers are not um sort of critical mass yet, but it doesn't really need to be. They're just um they're enough that they just slow the enemy down and support. allow the glaives to actually rip them apart. It's actually yeah, really interesting. Um, I actually like that. If if rapiers are not just self synergistic, that what you want to use with rapiers is more rapiers, which sometimes they feel. But if they actually support land forces, um, if rapiers do require enough, they are a little bit too strong. I think the way to go with them is definitely make them more into a support role, so they're excellent at supporting land forces and slowing units down and what have you, and also providing yeah. some anti-air cover. But um, yeah, we saw that there. That they're really helping the glaives to take out loads of towers and to catch enemy glaives and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're going to be moving on to game two at this point. After wow, drone just completely ate the map. My goodness. Yeah. That was on a, a larger map like that. You can expect it. So yeah, game two. Veltas probably doesn't want something even that big, and that was only 10 by 10. Mm. I don't know. Will Kane be joining us, or is he...? Kane, once they get knocked out, or if they get knocked out, at this point I'm not sure... Whoa, what? Wait, how did... Exploit one? I guess Kane will be joining us. Okay. That is Molly's surprise. Wait, where's Kane? What did he leave? I don't, I don't see him online, I thought... I like to have him in. He's a, he's he's good. Yeah, I don't know what happened there because I have weird. Uh, where'd they go? I think he might have he might have logged out after the um. Uh, after I'll lost check. Him, uh, after I have lost I have them on Skype. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to go. My voice is um <laughs> already going to get raw. That that game, the Aquanim Kane game, was too intense for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got too excited. Oh. Wait, no, Kane. Oh, Kane's just going to bed. Oh well, that's 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 okay. <laughs> I guess because they messed up against Aquinum. Yeah, they're crap. Oh, he played excellently. Tell him he played amazing. We were both ranting about how great their play was and how you know how edgy it was and how it's best game in the tourney. And he should totally come cast, unless he's. Unless he really has to sleep, but you know, sleep is for the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it looks like Archer's Valley is the map of choice. Yep. Which I don't agree with at all. Not for fail thoughts. For drone, yeah, totally. If drone wants to win, sure. I guess drone yeah. picked it. Drone picked it from Archer's Valley and Hide and Seek. Not sure why I'd offer those it... options. Yeah, maybe he thinks he can, you know, maybe he just wants to be able to play drone against drone on a um a, a big macro map and play him on his sort of on drone's own territory. Um and you know not go for the cheese plays, just you know try. Yeah. Okay, so he's he'll be Kane will be on in 10. So let's get him in on after this game. Excellent, yeah. No, he played so well. He played so well. Yeah, he that was... In both. They're, they're beautiful, beautiful games. So, Fail Thoughts now starting out with Pokemon Factory on this map. I am shocked. Actually, Drone as well. What? Cloakie is using this map? This map is huge. And yeah, it's not the hilly either. Last I saw it's it, it was the thing is, The hills uh, allow you to retreat up there. Um, There's a few which are metal extractors which are um, bot only or commander only. Oh, that's um, true, yeah. But the big advantage is that you can retreat your units up onto the hills, and you can't be pursued by vehicles, so you can sort of retreat up onto there and strike out in different directions. It doesn't really allow you to cross the map any faster. It's actually a really good balanced map in that respect, in that you can cross the map faster with vehicles, but you can locally you can skip over a hill in order to sort of get a, a, a sort of local advantage, or you can 
go up a hill and um to completely retreat from a uh, yeah enemy raider force or set up um, a bunch of wind gens actually, on the sides. Yeah, uh, wind gens are good up there as well. Yeah, um defenses, um radar towers such as Felthus is doing right now. Okay, zero point three. So wind gens are point four two one five. We see both players sending just the one clay scout, which is you know a very decent strategy. It punishes what um, drone has done here, which is this incredibly greasy, greedy zero. Um, defense zero tower style. again. Yep. Oh, it didn't get line of sight block. Mm. Solar did it was, not block um, that. that the, is... the command was there, so there's only so much you can do. That's true. He took true. out a metal extractor. He slowed things down a little bit. With with the one scout, all you're really trying to do is get information. On, you're trying to punish them if they're greedy, which he did a little bit. And you're trying to I mean, really greedy would have been like a line of wind generators, and that would have really punished um drone. But uh, yeah, there's yeah, no he, point. He got I mean, the metal extractor. If you look at the oh no, there is drone is building a line of wind gens. Pointing, I should point out that's zero to two point five. So this is entirely luck. Uh, they're they're gambling <laughs> on these wind gens being worth it. They aren't yeah. they aren't biasing the odds by putting it on high ground. It's they're always on average. They are always um. Slightly better on average. On average, average yeah, but yeah, not necessarily but so, guaranteed. But they're riskier. That's the thing. They're riskier in every single, almost every single ways in which something can be riskier. And this is drone, drones play is very aggressive, very expansionistic. He takes a lot, a lot of territory. He doesn't start with an LT or a or a um. He started with a single defender, you know, which was almost out of position yeah. to cover most of his base. So yeah, he's playing aggressive. He's playing expansionistic. He's playing um, you know, to you know get get whatever edge he can. Yeah, and I mean they do have the micro to do it. Like the, you gotta respect that. And mm, Failthos, well, I mean that's yeah. Failthos doesn't is not really respecting that. They're they're going once again for heavy glaive. They want to see if they can just out micro drone, out glaive drone. Very slightly lucky, and mm. that drone's getting a bit of ping, but still, it's yeah. They're that's what they're trying to do. And the thing is, at least in Archer's Valley, it looks like it's large enough that they can get local advantages where they need to. Yeah, as long he's as playing careful. well, but you can see this is the difference between. Um, I mean, some of this comes down to style, and you can say this is a perfectly valid way to play, but Failthus is expanding away from the enemy with his commander, while Dr Drone is expanding towards the center of the map with his commander. This provides this zone of protection behind the commander, where if any units stumble into the commander, which they're about to do, possibly, you no, know, they get okay, taken out yeah. immediately. And you can also build defenses as he, as he goes, and it's a much stronger sort of expansion. And then you can take the center of the map and project power from here. What Feldas is doing is, unless someone gets tricky and tries to raid around the back there and take out that extra expansion, he's not going to run into anything. He's not projecting any force. He's not projecting any power into the center of the map with his commander there. And as his commander expands, he's going to you know take these. He's going to expand around the sides. Mm -hmm. So you know he's, he's but he is sending out two constructors in the middle of the map, and they're slightly faster than the enemy commander. So perhaps he can make a nest there. But very soon he's going to be coming up against drones commander, which is going to be you know trying to get that middle max. Yeah, the trying to get max. center hill. Yeah. And at that point, he's going to so fall maybe apart. he can get something done with these constructors and send say Rocco's down there because that's what you really need to beat up beat away an enemy uh, commander. But um, yeah, if it's it, maybe he can do something around the side with his commander here and Failed get some good no expansion idea, here. But you can you you can see the way drones expanding. You look at the map and he's expanding radially outwards from his base. With mm -hmm. his commander is the spearhead, which is cutting up the two sides of his territory, so that you know you can't raid both sides at once. You can raid one side, or you can raid the other side. But if you attack one side with your glaives and there's nothing there, you run up against defenses and you pull them back, you have to go all the way around to attack And then hit the commander. Side. And that doesn't work out. If you go through the middle, you hit the commander, exactly. And now Drone taking advantage of that defensive play to be able to push forward. Failthoss looks like a bit of a panic defender here. Which he's, he's, um... That's yeah, working the, the okay, the commander defense there, it, it was good. It sort of paid off against the four glaives. He, he got three of them. So um, he has defended that route. But um, mm -hmm. he's setting up a real nest here in the center with his um, with his constructors. So hopefully he can do something with that. But while his own raiders come on the side. But um, Drone's doing that thing that um, I was, I, I've, I've talked about in other games where you just pull, you see some stuff coming, you just pull your rector back and you cloak it and you pull it, pull it sideways to the way the enemy's going. Go back and you build the metal extractors again. Yeah. yeah. Really perfect example of that, where he goes up the hill. While, while the, the raiders were coming down, he just travels um, perpendicular to them, goes out sideways up the hill, and then comes straight back down again to rebuild the uh, 
metal extractors. Yeah, so that's we see the Failsides so taking well. a lot more territory now, which is which is good. They're they're coming back up on parity, but they um, well they are, yeah. but they're actually not doing too bad for military. I, mean, I still think that the local mm. advantage play is actually working in their favor, just because mm. they're able to pick off stray glaives and make sure that their army remains slightly larger. Yeah, playing the big macro scale, fail first can do it. And for all that, um, you know, I am saying there are certain tricks and techniques, such as, oh, he's perfect. You can see drone is pushing across the middle now. He's taken a quarter of the map, and now he's pushing his commander across. Just yeah, take the that out side. and take his half of the map. But Felthus is doing the same thing. He's relying on constructors, and it's paid off for him thus far. But his constructors are now going to run into a big glaive pack, and this is the bit, the danger for this style. Mm -hmm. If that was a commander, he wouldn't have a problem with this problem. But he's losing his his um. Uh, his things. He's responding with his own raiders, but um, he has his own um, constructors around the back, so yeah. it looks like he can still stay ahead, but um, this this game's going to even out by the look of it. Excellent yeah, play. It from both pretty well. I think that Feldhaus mm. is actually slightly ahead. I mean, okay, they're slightly behind in terms of numbers. It's just the overall territory, they, they haven't taken it a bit faster, whereas Drone, the entire west side is still a little risky. They do have glaives in the way to stop drone from completely taking the western, the southwest side. Falthus is doing really well with this this raider, oh, with this nice. raider pack right here. It's a big pack. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it can do against the rapier switch, though. Not sure, but it's on the high ground at least. Drone has. Yeah. That that'll help a lot. Oh yeah, that's gonna I'd totally dive help. Them. I would dive those rapiers and try and shoot them down because glaives can do that. If you run away from them, you just lose them one at a time. But. Yeah. Ooh, the one shot. Ooh, the one shot on the glaives. Ow. Yeah, but it looks like that doesn't matter. The flank. Force, but he's coming in on Belfast the center as well. with the flank at the same time. I mean, so the rapiers are being distracted by the glaives that really don't matter, all things considered. Unfortunately, a lot of the glaives that mm. do matter are getting killed to a lotus rather than avoiding it. Managing to get rid of that at least for round two, assuming round two comes. And round two is actually around the back, having to defend. Thalthos not able to pull that in and get a second wave. Mm. Forced to retreat as a result of... Drone's very aggressive and very well-timed attack. Yeah, that quarter, which was the second phase of expansion, you can see that, um, yeah, the, those, those drone's glaives have really swept in and take that out. They didn't contest the first quarter, but the second quarter is being heavily contested by Drone. And um, while uh, Felthas is pushing into Drone's original quarter, which is not always the best to do, because it's quite easy to defend, because it's not that far from the base. Whereas he could have raid around the side right now. You can see the single constructor on the lower left side is expanding naked. But he doesn't have anything that can to contest that. He's just really worried about these rapiers, which he should be. Yeah, but he's built his own um, trident coming in at least. That will help. That'll help a lot. That should. Yep. That should clear the skies. Yeah, course. tridents are slower, but um, they kill rapiers quite efficiently. Yeah, but at the same time, there's only one lotus here. It isn't a hill, mind, but it's still only one lotus. The glaives could surround it and get rid of it. However, that to be careful because drone looks like they want to fight near that lotus. And obviously, Felthas does not. Felthas, however, now aware of the Lotus, so they won't be able to be torn apart too quickly by it. Not surprised, not at least by surprise. A and lot of reclaim over in the in this east side as well, where all the battles been going on. Yeah, no one really has much. That, neither player has claim of that. That's the thing. And they're mm. pretty much fighting over that reclaim field, and it looks like Drone sacrificing a bunch of their glaives. Moving in, that looked like they were trying to go for a bit of a spearhead move, but it didn't work out. Ended up being pincered instead. We and have the, the air war going on. Yeah, and Felthos, Felthos and Drone both going for Tridents and Rapiers, but Tridents are the advantage of Felthos right now. Drone built a few, but not enough. It's like 2 on 1, went from 3 on 1 to 2 on 1. Yeah, there's no easy way to deal with this. At this point, Felthos is ahead in the air war very slightly. But they can't. The commander's forward. threatened by this size, but there's too much defense there, I think. Yeah. Um, big glaive pack coming in, which might do something. The might glaive be able pack. To take out the commander. I'm not sure it matters at this point, uh, though. No, at this stage in the game, it's way too late. It's like a tenth of the economy. Drone's mm. commander does go down, but that's hardly anything. Drone is still ahead of Felthos militarily and economically. Yeah, and he really needs to contest the enemy army. If that does matter, it's for contesting this middle metal extractor, but Drone's moved his big army in there, and I'm not sure how much this will help. I don't know either. I think Drone's going to move in for the kill. I think all the Rapiers here are basically enough to tear apart everything that Felthos has. He's, he's using the Triton, right, correct approach here. He's chasing the Rapiers and taking them down rather than uh, just running away from them and losing them one by one. If you can turn on the Rapiers and burn them, it's quite good. But he's losing his, no, his, his um, Tridents one at a time and he's rapidly losing his, any military advantage he might have had. No, uh, Drone at this point is so far ahead. They're... 
They look like they're going around the side, but they look like they were going to attack the center and try to just take it. I mean, until the Tridents came in and they realized the Rapiers couldn't quite move in uncontested. Ideally, Felfer should hit the um, the Tridents with his Glaives, take yeah. them out, and he can get swing back the um, advantage. Well, Losing his own fine. commander. They're doing fine. They're going... Oh, failed us. Are they about to lose the commander? Are mm. they? Oh, that yep. was close. But yeah, they are attacking nicely with the glaives. Unfortunately, mm. that commander death did kill most of the glaive army. Because that it's actually fascinating. Sorry, it's fascinating in this matchup that um, rapiers one shot glaives because this specific matchup that rapiers are actually best in. Yeah, I'm just thinking though. But the thing is, I think drones built too many tridents. I think they're it's expecting possible. way too much because I think they only needed about two or three. They're expecting a lot more coming. I mean, they are going for rapiers now, which is good. And Felthos is getting tridents, which they need to. But the four or five trial tridents at that point, as opposed to the rapiers, if the, those had been rapiers, or at least a couple that had been rapiers, that probably would have been game. Like right there, would have been able to get rid of the glaives. Whereas at this point, it can't. And the rapiers are going down one at a time. They're being split up, not in a nice yeah, group. I and Felt has to switch to Grande, which is good, the correct thing to do versus Rapiers, uh, versus Tridents. So um, maybe he can make something happen to that, but he only has one Gremlin thus far, which is yeah, not all that useful. The, the Rapiers are really starting to ball up. He's really switching heavily over into Rapier production. You can see both his um, uh, caretakers are assisting the um, gunship plant rather than the um, uh, Cloakbot factory. So Yeah. Whereas on the other side, Felthus is pumping everything out of his Cloakbot factory and he's making Zeus now, hoping to break the front, I suppose. That would make sense. I mean, the Zeus will also he's work really well against Rapiers. He really should be using. He should be switching into into Grand A at this point to counter the enemy Tridents. Cause and they have really actually. Using. There yeah. are Gremlins that he, are. He up. has some. It's good. But it's not quite enough. It's not worth losing this many Tridents. No, not not that they've lost that last one too. It's just. And I mean, yeah. Drone just still pegging away at the western side of the map. They haven't really lost anything. Like Drone, they lost a little bit in the northeast. It looks mm. like Felthos actually took over most of that reclaim field. That's a good thousand reclaim. Okay, that's a lot of reclaim. So, yeah. Felthos took a really good position with that reclaim field. And they're taking it as well. They're, they are reclaiming it. They're making use of it. And they have the caretakers to actually make full use of that as well. But you can see what uh, drone has, like, double the energy economy of oh, yeah. Felthos right now. Um, drone is, is not that ahead on... Um, he, no, he's getting quite ahead actually now on energy, yeah, on metal as well. Yeah, all the, all the combat's been happening on um, Felthus's sort of side of the map, which means that you know all, it's he's the one who's been losing metal extractors and territory. But now has his Zeus is a, a cracking the front now, but it's about how much damage they can do really. Especially given that they're basically out of position, drone in a great position to get rid of the trident, getting yeah. rid of all the trident, getting rid of everything that can stop the rapier ball, and the rapier ball along with the glaive support is just finishing everything off. The eastern yeah, side is going to go has, down. Drone has gremlins of his own, so he can't contest this with the tridents at all. Nope. Which means at this point, this entire northeast side is dead. Failed thoughts of Zeus's. I don't even think even if they win the engagements, they're mm. going to be able to win. Yeah, they're just slowly plowing through things, and you can see drones not even contesting them because they do damage sort of fairly slowly, and it's they're so hard to to, to dislodge that he's only now sort of building the force up to to. Stop them from advancing. Yeah. But there's no point. They're, they're so slow. Drone won't lose any meaningful territory before they manage to destroy Felthos's entire mm. base. And they're Drone They're quite knows good that. against rapiers, though. They can hit rapiers and they have the range. Oh, uh, yeah. The totally. Mm. But who cares when they're over here and your forces are over here in the corner? Mm. The Zeus are nowhere near them. Yeah. Uh, the, hey, the warrior, finally. Carving, <laughs> carving Felthos up now. Um, but uh, about, that's game. really valuable. Really game and match. Okay. Yeah. He did a really good job. He picked a big macro map. He fought drone on his own standards. And for the first part of the battle, he, he did really well. He really kept up. Um, yeah. Excellent play. Good yeah. rating. But um, it just started to fall apart. Mostly because of the rapiers. Yeah. Once the gremlins in. came in. Because the rapiers, okay. It's still kind of even thanks to the tridents. But once the gremlins came in, it was death. That yeah, was, he lost his own tridents, it. and, and yeah, it, it's it swung out of his favor. But anyway. really, really well played from Felthus. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring in Kane now since we can. It's been ten minutes. Hey, Kane. Oh, it's not in yet. Okay, well, when when they get in. So now we are going to move. On. What game should we do next? Oh, Steel Blue and Google Frog. Hello. Hey, Kane. How's it going? Hey guys. Hey. How's it going? 
That oh, game right. was insane. That game you played, oh, most of them were, but that final one against Aquanim, oh my god. Oh, Just like yeah. the way you were playing with the radars and the raiders and zero defense. It was so edgy. Yeah, and it was just such it out so read heavy. That's what I was saying during the game. Was like you basically had to make perfect reads every time, otherwise you were done. Oh, well, <laughs> I yeah, definitely had some regrets about it in the end, but uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, the, the way you pulled, the way that you know you were, your raiders were perfectly in position to defend your commander, and then you know, and the, but then his raiders pulled around, and you intercepted the levelers perfectly, and then he just was like whoop, and sent his raiders down to the south, and you chased oh, back. I know. To the Oh, man, raiders, so close. That was the turnaround. That, yeah, was, that, was, it really was. that was the one moment where the entire game flipped. Oh my god. I didn't I just, didn't even feel bad about it. It was such a beautiful move how he did that. I tried to sandwich him in, but uh, he yeah, just, like, it was, they just uh, slipped right by me. And, the, and then the, the double-pronged attack where he takes out your commander as well at the same time. Oh my mm. god. And then the, it was beautiful. And then that one little scorcher that ran around your base destroying everything which sort of <laughs> sealed the deal because you, you had the army of Oh, Ravager ball, like, you were really climbing through his base, but mm. you just lost too much that single Scorcher, it was just, ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, it was a nice win, definitely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my throat's sort of going, so I'm going to leave you and Shadow Fury to cast out the rest of the match. Okay, so All right. where is... Oh, shoot. Wait, where is Google Frog and Snuggle Base? They need to play. Alright, see you guys later. See ya. Later, Zach. All right. So yeah, I'm not sure why Google Fog and Snuggle Base are just watching this game. Or Steel Blue, I mean. Yeah, they're for some reason watching the Acronym Agent Three E Three Eight Two game while waiting for them because that's the next Winter Semis game. Like, we kind of wow. need to get through that. Yeah. <laughs> Tournament's going pretty fast. It's actually a bit yeah. slower than I'd like, but oh well. Two hours in so far. So what? You just felt like completely dead after that match with Aquanim because you kind of well, dropped. Well, uh, yeah, I'm pretty rusty, and so uh, it took pretty much everything I had just to keep up with him, you know. And uh, his play style is uh, is pretty taxing on the mind, you know. Just sort of he's so he's so squirrely, you know. He's kind of like Google Frog in that way. Uh, it's just really hard to keep up with him at all. And uh, mm -hmm. that and being out of practice really trained me. Yeah, that makes sense. So that now we're gonna be moving on to another semifinals game. But once again, game one is on Trojan Hills, and that is. Okay, my stream up. Yeah, that is a thing. Which, hmm, I think Google Frog's gonna have an easy advantage here. It's so one thing. Steel Blue. Steel blue, I don't, I don't envy right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Trojan Hills. This map was. Yeah, you actually weren't on this map. You were. Yeah, you were just on. In Cooper Hill. Yeah, Cooper Hill. Well, yeah. that was a weird game too. Ah, uh, yeah, it was. Just, uh, I let him take the center too well. I have such a hard time with defenders. I feel like that's pretty common in 1v1. A lot of 1v1 players have uh, difficulty clearing pork. Uh, the way you took that hill, I mean, it was just so so solid. I tried to raid around it, but uh, I couldn't break through the center. Well, I agree with raiding around it. I'm not going to lie. That was That's what I was suggested. I was kind of suggesting while I was watching it, because I casted a game on Wednesday on that map, and ra not raiding around it kind of lost the game. Mm -hmm. So I don't disagree with your decision. I just think that it was a little unfortunate that you had no easy way of getting around it or through it. Yeah, he ended up creeping uh, his defenders right up to the doorstep of my factory. And so my units would actually come out and then just immediately get shot. <laughs> Never yeah. a good situation. That's always the problem with Cooper Hill. It's such a hard yeah. to get around because of that. I tried to build hammers too, but uh, I learned during that game that they can't actually fire up that hill very well. Hmm, yeah. That's something to bear in mind about physics. Yeah. Like, that, I don't know. Obviously, the physics engine is a little bit wonky at times, but in general, if it works in real-life tactics, or at least if it's a thing that people talk about in real-life tactics, it might carry weight. 
something to always bear in mind. Like, you know, it might carry some weight. Might, maybe. It's worth trying, you know. <laughs> Sactoth mentioned uh, in the chat right after that game that Sniper was the right decision. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't even cross my mind. Yeah, because Sniper's sides. not gravity affected as far, or at least not much uh, at all. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I could have used maybe a Jethro to spot for it. Mm -hmm. that's, but, uh, that's, yeah. that's what I mean by maybe considering real life tactics is a good idea because some things are affected by gravity and so high ground advantage makes some a difference some mm -hmm. of the time. 